Uh huh. As you can see, we got our championship memorabilia, championship wallpaper on my desktop. I got it on my laptop right here. Even my phone got the championship wallpapers. What's up, everybody? It's been a long time coming. I haven't posted a video in like a month. Been soaking in the Super Bowl win, you know, wasting my time reading so many things, stats, news articles, focusing kind of on the, the beginning of free agency. We just uh, franchise tag Chris Godwin. We just signed uh, Levante to two years. And I've been busy with a lot of academic and personal family things, but I'm back to do my uh, Super Bowl, not Super Bowl, season review. Um, a lot of it is gonna be a review of things that have happened uh, or things that I've discussed probably in past videos. I mean, I've done, what, 16 regular season videos and four playoff ones, so it's gonna be a bunch of that stuff. But before I get into my uh, my season recap, my name is Rami B. If you are new here, make sure you click the subscribe button down below. Um, I post Buccaneer videos, obviously the season's over, and um, I'm gonna be posting some stuff, reactions to free agency, if we have any big signings, draft picks, schedules, that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, I got my championship merch. I got this, I got the the shirt that all the players wore after the Super Bowl, that dark gray one that had the logo up here and it said like champions. I'm actually going to Florida, to Tampa tomorrow. Um, I'll probably be there by the time this is up, but I'm definitely gonna go check out some like Dick's Sporting Goods and other sports stores and see if I can buy some more like uh, memorabilia, not necessarily clothing, but like, I don't know, a frame of the stadium or something cool like that. And I know the stadium put up their big uh, champions uh, banners and stuff on the boards outside. So maybe go take a picture, things like that. But uh, yeah. Let me go into the season recap. If you see me looking down, I am looking at uh, stats and stuff that I have on my laptop just for accuracy, but let's get into it. Um, I'm going to start off with the scoring uh, of the offense and defense. So offensively in the regular season, we scored 30.8 points per game for a total of 490 points, and that put us uh, third in the NFL. I think we were behind the Green Bay Packers and maybe Buffalo Bills, if I remember correctly. Um, so third overall. Uh, very good. I know historically, like in the last decade, every team that's hit 30 points per game has made the playoffs, I believe, for the most part. Um, in the playoffs, we still averaged 30.8, so completely consistent. We scored 31, 30, 31, 31. We were like the first team in NFL history to score 30 points in four uh, consecutive playoff games, like in one series. Uh, we were first in total points. Obviously, we played the most games, and we were third in points per game as well. I think first was like the Steelers. They had 37, but, you know, they only played one game. So um, I think we should technically be first in points per game because we played the most games. Uh, at the end, the Chiefs only played three. We played four, and we maintained that average, you know. Defensively in the regular season, we were eighth in uh, total points and points per game. We only gave up 22 points per game and a total of 355 overall. So we outscored our opponents by 135 points overall. And in the playoffs, we only gave up 19.5 points per game, uh, 78 total. So what was it, uh, 23 to Washington, 20 to the Saints, 26 to the Packers, and six to, nine to the Chiefs. Um, so we outscored our um, opponents by, it looks like almost 40 points, 35 points. Uh, so definitely good on that point. I know last year we were also top 10 in scoring as well on offense. Defense, not so much. But uh, I think last year we were at like 28.7 points per game. So overall, we definitely had an improvement in terms of that in offense. And much of that could be due to lack of turnovers. Um, we're not turning over the ball as much. Therefore, more drives are being potentially being sustained for uh, field goals and touchdowns as well. Um, so now let's break into like player stats. So Tom Brady had 4,633 yards, 40 passing touchdowns, three rushing touchdowns, and 12 picks in the regular season. Throw in the playoffs, he had another 1,061 yards, 10 passing touchdowns, one rushing touchdown, and three interceptions. So overall, he had about uh, 5,694 yards, 50 passing touchdowns, four rushing, and 15 picks overall. So 50 and four, 50 and uh, 14, 50 and 15, sorry. 50 touchdowns, 15 picks overall, incredible numbers, and then also throw in the four rushing touchdowns. I saw a thing that said Tom Brady uh, is the first quarterback to have 50 thrown touchdowns in a year and win the Super Bowl. I think there's only been, what, Brady did it, uh, Mahomes did it, and uh, Peyton Manning did it before. Brady did it in that year with uh, Moss lost, uh, Manning did it with the Broncos lost, and Mahomes uh, did it and didn't make the Super Bowl that year. Um, it, was, it was his first full year and he lost to the Patriots in the championship game. But incredible, this is literally what we brought Brady for. Um, outside of the statistical part where he's gonna make safe decisions, um, we all know that uh, Bruce Arians' system in the first year brings out a lot of interceptions. Um, and the fact that Brady only had 12 in the regular season um, tells you that year two is probably going to be wild. Um, I don't think he's going to have like a cut to like four picks. He might still have eight to nine. 
uh, just because of the nature of the offense being a little more risk uh, risk taking. But um, that's what we brought him in for. And outside of that, just raising the competitive level of everybody around him, uh, teammates on offense and defense, and coaches too, holding them accountable. Like they said during the bye week, where he was like, "Hey, you know, I need more preparation from the coaches and things like that." Um, Going over to our wide receivers, Evans had 70 catches, 1,006 yards, and 13 touchdowns in the regular season with 11 catches, 204 yards, and two in the playoffs. Um, it seems like offensively, none of our receivers really went off on the playoffs. Uh, Chris Godwin had looks like he had the most uh, yards in the playoffs. He had 84 catches for 840 yards in the regular season, seven touchdowns in the playoffs, one touchdown, 16 catches for 232. AB in the regular season, 483 yards, four touchdowns, and then 81 yards and two touchdowns in the playoffs. Gronk, 623 yards in the regular season, um, seven touchdowns there, and then in the playoffs, 110, kept, 110 yards, sorry, and two touchdowns, uh, which came in the Super Bowl. Um, in terms of our running game, Ronald Jones, 978 yards, seven touchdowns in the regular season, 35 yards, 35 carries for 139 yards in the playoffs. And then Leonard Fournette, 367 yards in the regular season, which was very disappointing, but in the playoffs, 300 yards and three touchdowns. Um, three, sorry, uh, three rushing touchdowns. It doesn't include the receiving touchdown he had against the Saints in the playoffs. But uh, it seemed, yeah, nobody really exploded. I would say Evans maybe in the Washington game. He had 119 yards or something like that and a touchdown. That was the biggest like offensive output yardage-wise. And then Gronk in the Super Bowl having two touchdowns. But, I mean, it seemed like in the playoffs our offense didn't have to be super lethal. Um, I, I, against Washington it did. We had over 500 yards of offense. But against the Saints, Packers, and Chiefs, um, we worked with a lot of short yard, short field. Sorry, we had a lot of turnovers. What is it against the Packers? We had two turnovers against the Saints. We had five, um, and then the, against the Chiefs, we had two as well. Um, against Washington, we just had one. But it seemed like in the playoffs, Washington was the toughest opponent that we had, especially um, defense. It was hard to move the ball on them, um, and it was also difficult to kind of stop them. Mostly because our, our defensive scheme was like a lot of zone. You didn't think Heineke was going to really ball out like that. Whereas uh, against Breeze, Rodgers, and Mahomes, we really stepped up on the defensive side and uh, made it really hard for them. Um, but yeah, a lot of these offensive numbers overall exploded, as we know, after the bye week, uh, week 13. We came back, we had four, week 12, sorry. We had four games um, from week 13 to 17. Uh, or some yeah week 13 by then week 14 we came back all the way through 17 and that's when we exploded and a lot of the numbers really jumped up like Evans catching that uh, seventh consecutive year of a thousand yards coming in that last game luckily he got injured afterwards uh, when he hyperextended his knee and luckily he came back in the playoffs and really contributed um, on the defensive side Devin White in the regular season had a forced fumble and a fumble recovery and nine sacks and in the playoffs two interceptions and two fumble recoveries the two picks as you know are um, one in the Super Bowl against Mahomes, one against uh, Breeze, and then the two recoveries are Saints uh, and um, the Green Bay Packers. Levante David in the regular season, one interception, three forced fumbles, two fumble recoveries, and a, one and a half sacks, and the playoffs just one sack. Uh, Antoine Winfield Jr., one sack in the regular, three sacks in the regular season, one pick, and then in the playoffs, one interception and one forced fumble. Whitehead in the regular season, two interceptions, two sacks, and in the playoffs, two forced fumbles. Sean Murphy bunting, one interception in the regular season, and then really in the playoffs is where he stepped up. He was kind of a liability in the regular season, but three picks in three consecutive games in the playoffs. And then Carlton Davis in the regular season had four interceptions. Going over to the defensive line now, Shaq Barrett, eight sacks and two forced fumbles in the regular season, and then four sacks in the playoffs, three against Aaron Rodgers and one against uh, Mahomes. It seems wrong because, you know, Mahomes was running a lot and he was pressured a lot, but he was getting the ball out of his hands a lot too. So he had a lot of quarterback hits, not as many sacks. JPP in the regular season, two interceptions, nine and a half sacks, four forced fumbles, and two fumble recoveries. Crazy stat line. And in the playoffs, two sacks. And then Sue had six sacks and one forced fumble in the regular season, and in the playoffs, one and a half sacks. Um, so as you can see, on the defensive end, their D-line really thrived. Um, our three big... Uh, contributors between JPP, Shaq, and Sue definitely combined for what is that, uh, 15, 20 something sacks, uh, six, seven forced fumbles. Um, so they really were game changers in that end and then throw in our linebackers as well in the front seven, throw in a few more, you know, Devin White, another nine sacks that puts us over 30 sacks just from four players alone. Um, but the defense really stepped up this season. Uh, the defense really, uh, improved upon the end of last season. Um, I remember the end of last season, we were starting to really uh, gel and get together on the defensive side and really shut down other teams. And it seemed like this season, we started off the season really hot on defense. And then as the season progressed, the defense started slipping a little bit. 
Um, and it really need, we really needed the offense to kind of dominate. But then once the playoffs came around, especially after the Washington game, the defense really clamped down, which is really uh, really good to see knowing that moving forward, especially next year, we're still waiting on Shaq and re-signing Sue. Um, I think those are the two major free agents remaining to sign. Um, once we get them back, there's no reason to think that our defense will uh, fall apart. Um, as, as we know now that Todd Bowles is willing to adjust his defensive calls, as we saw in the Super Bowl, he went to a lot of two man, uh, two high man, uh, two high safety coverage, which he doesn't do often or much at all. Um, so knowing that he's able to adjust depending on the competition, and then we actually have the horses to do it, especially the front seven, as we know they're very lethal. But then now our secondary, which everyone was saying was the weak point, very young. Um, we don't really need a veteran. Sure, we need depth. Of course, everybody needs depth, but. Carlton Davis is really uh, becoming a top-tier cornerback. He just needs a few more picks uh, to kind of really cement himself there. But I think between 2019 and 2020, he has the most passes defense or something like that. Um, Sean Murphy bunting. Playoffs really turned it on. Hopefully that continues. Uh, Jamel Dean still has some work to do improvements, but he wasn't that big of a liability at all. And then obviously the safeties between Mike Edwards, uh, Jordan Whitehead. Um, Jordan Whitehead has a lot of potential in terms of uh, – he's very good as a run stopper and forcing fumbles, but – He's also been around some balls and had a lot of near picks as well. Mike Edwards always seems to be getting interceptions and things like that. And then uh, Antoine Winfield, as we know, is a stud. He's going to be a star. So it seems like defensively we should be poised to kind of repeat um, the success that we had and maybe improve it upon uh, this past season. Offensively, you would think that nothing would really change. We still have to figure out what we're going to do with Leonard Fournette. Are we going to re-sign him? We haven't really heard talks about them working on re-signing him, so I don't know if they're going to let him test the market. Um, Ronald Jones is still on that rookie deal. He'll be in year four, uh, which will be the final year of his contract. Um, hoping to see more from him. He obviously almost had 1,000 yards and really played well this season. Um, he just got to really, you know, hit the jug machine and catch 100 balls a day, like from now until next year, and really get his hands right. Um, we don't know anything about AB yet or this whole OBJ rumor. I personally don't want OBJ. I don't think we can afford to have OBJ there. Um, having him uh, and AB and Mike Evans and Chris Godwin's too much with Scotty Miller. Um, I think we're definitely probably going to bring AB back for cheap. I still don't know if teams are really going to want to, you know, touch AB considering he has a court date in December still. But I could see the Bucks bringing him back at least until then. Um, so if we bring the offensive side, it seems like they're going to be pretty much uh, back overall. Um, we're still Gronk waiting on Gronk. Gronk isn't going to another team, so it's either us or nobody. He's already said many times he doesn't want to play for anyone but Brady. Um, and seeing that he's already said after the season ended he wants to come back and try to win another one, I could see him coming back for uh, a reasonable contract as well. Cameron Braid, I don't know if he still has another year or not, and I think O.J. Howard still has one more year. Um, so we're going to see kind of what's going on there, but it seems like overall we're going to bring back uh, a lot of our players that uh, – that contributed uh, tremendously for the Super Bowl run. Um, like we said, you know, the Super Bowl, Evans had one catch, Godwin had uh, two, um, and Scotty Miller didn't have any catches, and we still blew out a very, very good Chiefs team. So it really tells you how deep we are and how uh, everybody's willing to step up and how Brady's willing to distribute the ball and not really force it. Um, so knowing that we have so many weapons there on the offensive side, I shouldn't, you shouldn't feel too worried that the offense won't maintain, at worst case maintain, and then take a step up and could potentially be the highest scoring team in the NFL next year. Um, just because, again, year two, Brady said that even before the Super Bowl, he said that the offense is still getting it together and he feels year two is going to be much, much better. Um, there's still rumors of them extending Brady slash restructuring. Uh, I can see it happening because Brady isn't going to, you know, he always does that and takes pay cuts to bring players back. But yeah, we'll see. Um, overall, we were 11 and 5, as we know. We had a rough stretch in November where we lost three games. At one point, we were 7 and 5, thinking, hey, this might not be, you know, we're falling apart. What are we going to do after the bye? Well, luckily, we had some. We played four bad teams after the bye, and it really helped boost the momentum and, you know, get us gelling and things like that. But uh, next year, the goal is definitely Super Bowl again and winning the division. Um, who knows what's going on with the Saints, if Breeze is retiring or not. But regardless, we should be uh, winning the division. The, the way we played the last eight games of the season, the last four being the offensive explosion, and then the last four, the first four, sorry, having the offensive explosion after the bye, and then the last four games in the playoff playing a really dominant defensive performance and very smart offensive football, um, I don't see how we don't. Uh, win the division. I don't want to go into scheduling stuff now. We obviously know who our opponents are and if it's home or road, um, but we don't know yet uh, what the dates are and things like that, so I won't get into any speculation on records, but um, I can see us winning more than 11 games more than likely. I, have, I need to look at the schedule, but if we want 11 this year with a somewhat tough schedule, I can only imagine uh, next year what it'll be like. But yeah, Bucks fans, comment down below uh, 
what are your thoughts on the season? Obviously, it was a success. Super Bowl number two, second Lombardi. Love this shirt. This is my favorite Super Bowl shirt. I love the long sleeve. It's even got like the Super Bowl 37 logo and the 55. Uh, so, uh, yeah, um, definitely, definitely great performance. And uh, yeah, thank you for tuning in. I don't want to make this too long as always. Make sure you click the subscribe button down below. Go Bucks. I might be taking some time off until some new developments happen, but you know, definitely stay tuned to my channel and uh, more content will be coming up. So, as always, thank you. Feels good to be champions a month later, a month later, and we are still the best team in the world. Oh, it feels so good. But yeah, as always, Bucks Nation, I am out. Let's go! You a Buccaneer fan, let me know! Let me know! We got to win this thing at home! Let's go! Buccaneers!